Hey chicas, welcome to Coding for Chicks. In the last lesson, we played around with a Python shell, we learned about variables, and now it's time to create our own program. We're also going to be learning about how to read input into a variable and how to create if statements. We start by creating a new Python file by going to File in our Python shell and pushing New File. Even though the file is still empty, we're going to save it. So let's start by going to File and Save As. Now it takes you to your Python folder and you can choose to save your files here if you want. But what I'm going to do is travel to the root of my C drive by pushing this button here. And then I'm going to create a new folder by pushing this button. And I'm going to name that folder My Python Code. And save the file there. My first program. You can see that the program has the ending .py. That means it's a Python file. And the first thing we want to do is try to use our program to print out a line. So we're going to write print. This is my first program. Now we made some changes to our program that we haven't saved and idle will tell us about it by putting a star in front of the name of the program. Even though I like stars very much, I'd still like to save my program. So we can either go to file and save or we can go to run and run module and it's going to notify us so we can save on the way. I'm going to choose the second option and run module. This is the notification window you're going to see and as you push OK your program will be saved and run. Now let's push OK and see what happens. Hmm, this looks familiar, doesn't it? What's actually happening is that the shell is now running the code from our program. So let's go back to our program and add some more code. I would like to see an empty line after the first line. The easiest way to do it is to write print and two quotation marks. I encourage you to run your program after adding some code to it because it will give you a better feel of how the process works. You can either go to the run, run module as I showed you before or just push F5 on your keyboard. That's a quicker and more comfortable way to do it. Now I'm just going to continue coding and run the whole program in the end. Now let's create the variables that are going to be in the program. The first one is string, S for string, name. I don't know what's going to be in it yet, so I'm going to keep it empty. The next one is also a string, has shoes, also empty. Now the third one is an integer, so I pairs of shoes. And when we create an empty integer, we just give it the value zero. The fourth one and the last one is also an integer, I choose in total, also empty. So I told you we were going to read some input from the keyboard and we're going to do that by start by reading something into the s name variable. So we write the name of the variable and to put something into the variable we use a built-in function called raw input. And we write raw underscore input. Then we put up the parenthesis. And at this point, we can give the user some instructions about what kind of input he can put in. And what I'm going to write is, hello, what is your name? And then I would like to write print welcome. And I put a uh, space here after welcome because I'm going to add the input to the welcome message. So shall we try it? Pushing F5. Hello, what's your name? 
My name is John. Welcome, John. That was fun. I finally made a friend. And he calls me John. But oh well, it's fun anyway. What more can we do? Hmm, let's see. So, I want to write something more. Mm, how about into the hash shoes variable? I'm still going to be using the raw input. And my instructions are now going to be, do you have shoes? Please answer yes, no. There's a reason why I want only yes and no and not yes, I have shoes or something like that. The reason is I want to use the answer in my if statement. But what's an if statement? Ooh, it's getting exciting. The best way to understand how it works is to see it in action. So let's start by writing if s hash shoes, that is our variable. If the input in the f has shoes is yes, then what? Then everything that happens after and is indented here below is going to happen. So this here within the parenthesis is called a condition. And if that is true, that is if yes is in the s has shoes, yes and only yes, nothing else, then what is indented here below is going to happen. Now let's write that part. Let's print out, you are so lucky. It's very important that you take care to indent in front of what's going to happen within the if statement. If you don't, you're going to get errors and trouble. So just listen to Python and do what it wants. Now I'm going to stop my if statement here and I'm going to write something called else. Else is what happens when the condition is not true. So if there's not a yes within s has shoes, else is going to happen in all other cases. As with if, the indentation is very important for the else. You can either push enter after the colon and you will be in the right place or if something happens, you can backspace to the, uh, the left side of the file and push the tab button and idle will automatically put you in the right place. Now let's write what's going to happen if the condition is not met. So we're going to put print, you don't have shoes, you really should get some. So shall we run and see? I'm still John. Do I have shoes? Yes, I have shoes. I'm so lucky. To try it again, we need to run the program again. So F5 again. John? No. I don't have shoes. Yeah, I, I really should get some. Care to make it a little bit interesting? Now we're going to play with the other variables. The raw input function is always going to read in a string, but we have integer variables. So what are we going to do? I'm going to do all of this within my if statement. So I put my cursor after the quotation marks and press enter. Then as before, I write the name of my variable. I pairs of shoes and then the name of the function and the instructions. How many pairs of shoes do you have? But this is an integer and this is going to read in a string and we don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert that string to an integer by putting int parenthesis and the parenthesis on the outside of the raw input function. What's happening here is that we have a function within another function. As you can see, the int function starts in front of the raw input function and ends after it. So that's the second one to be run. The first one that runs is the raw input function 
and that is going to ask you how many pairs of shoes do you have, get the input, and that input is what is going to go into the int function. So the int function really doesn't care about the raw input function, it just cares about the keyboard input that you write. Now let's see how we can use this integer input. Let's get our, our fourth variable, i shoes in total. And what we're going to do is put two multiplication sign the i pairs of shoes. Do you see what I'm doing there? Hmm? Do you see it? And to finish it off beautifully, we're going to print out print you have a total of plus i shoes in total plus single shoes. The plus sign here and here is not the mathematical plus sign we're used to. It's a sign of concatenation. And that means that this part of the string is going to be added to what's in this variable. And that's also going to be added to this part of the string. So the total of this here is going to be a longer string. But wait a minute. This here variable is not a string, it's an integer. So your computer is going to be very confused. It's probably going to say something like, Hey John, my new friend, how do you calculate you have a total of plus 5? I really don't know the answer. And what does our lovely computer friend do when it doesn't know the answer? It's going to give us an error, shall we see? Yep, that's an error. We were all raised well and we tried to be nice to our new friends. So let's try to help the computer out. So what we need is to take what's in this variable and change it to a string, don't we? We know how to change a string to an integer by using the integer function. So now we should go the other way around. Hmm. How about using the str function? str, and we use our variable as an input, and we push f5, and we try the same thing again. Yes, 5. I have a total of 10 single shoes. The program works. We're done. So, now you have a lot of new fun programming tools in your toolbox. The last advice for this tutorial is don't be afraid of errors. Try to read what they say and understand what's really going on. For instance, the error we got before, it's the computer telling you exactly what the problem is. It's telling you, hey, the error is here. And what I can't do is I cannot concatenate str, which is string, and int, which is integer, objects. And you, being the good friend you are, you helped her out and eventually you got a running program. If you like my videos, please like, comment or subscribe on YouTube, like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. Thank you for listening. This is Coding for Chicks.